Welcome to Electron Line. Here's our first example of how to work with a wedge problem. Here we're driving a wedge underneath this large object, trying to push it upward. The large object has weight W, and we're applying a force F. Notice that the angle of the wedge here is 8 degrees relative to the horizontal. The question, of course, is how much force will be required in terms of the weight of the object to push that object up? Also realizing that the coefficient of static friction between the object and the walls that hem it in here is equal to 0.35. What we're looking for is we're looking for the pending motion up. What is the force required to just get to the point where any additional force will cause the block to move upward? So we've taken the block here by itself. We're going to draw a free body diagram on this block. We're going to apply a force that's going to be normal to the surface at the bottom by driving the wedge in. So we're going to see a normal force right here. Let's call this the normal force at A. And that normal force, of course, makes an angle of 8 degrees with the vertical because of the slant of the wedge. So this here will be an 8 degree angle. We also realize that because there's friction on the bottom surface and this friction over here, both of the coefficient of friction is 0.35, we can calculate the angle required to come up with the reaction forces. That angle, because of the friction, will be 19.29 degrees, which means that the normal force pushing this way, and of course then we'll have a, a reaction force that makes an angle of 19.29 degrees with the normal. So here's the normal force. Let's call this reaction force 1, and that is going to make an angle of 19.29 degrees with the horizontal. So we'll call that angle phi, and that's equal to 19.29 degrees. And of course, the reaction force at the bottom here will also be 19.29 degrees relative to the normal. So that would be this angle right here. Let me use this color. Too many pens in my hand. So we'll have a reactionary force here. Let's call that R2, and that will also be here an angle phi, which is equal to 19.29 degrees. And of course, we have to add both of those angles together to find the direction of R2. And then we still have the weight of the block pushing downward. That will be the weight, which allows us not to sign up the three or make a diagram of the three forces involved. Let's draw this force right here. This is the reaction force R1. And we have the force, the weight force right here. All right, let's call this the weight W. And then we have the reaction force R2. Like this. So that shows us the sum of the forces acting on this object right here just at the pending motion situation, just enough force applied so that the block is ready to start moving up. And of course, all the sum of all the forces will add up to zero. Now we need to find the angles associated with these. Well, notice that if we draw a horizontal like this, we have this angle between R2 and the vertical, which will be a total of 27.29 degrees. So this angle right here is 27.29 degrees. This angle right here can be found by taking the right angle, 90 degrees, and add to that the angle relative to the horizontal right here, which is 19.29 degrees, which means that this angle adds up to 109.29 degrees. And then this angle right here, this angle will simply be 180 minus 27.29 degrees and minus 109.29 9 degrees, which means that angle is let's see, 180 minus 27.29 and minus 109.29 equals 43.42 degrees. 43.42 degrees. All right, what are we trying to do? Well, ultimately, we're trying to find this force, but notice in this triangle, F doesn't even appear. That'll come in the second part of the problem. What we need to do first is find R1 and R2 in terms of the weight of the object, and we can do that here using the law of sines. We can say that W, the weight of the block, divided by the sine of the angle directly opposite to this force, which is this angle right here, divided by the sine of 43.42 degrees, is equal to R1 
divided by the sine of the angle directly across it, which would be 27.29 degrees, which is equal to R2, where am I, uh, R2 right here, divided by the angle directly across, which is a sine of 109.29 degrees. That allows us to find both the magnitude of R1 and R2, which are the reactionary forces on the block. So we can say that R1 is equal to the weight times the ratio of the sine of 27.29 degrees divided by the sine of 43.42 degrees. And the magnitude of R2 is going to be equal to the weight of the block times the ratio of the sine of 109.29 degrees divided by the sine of 43.42 degrees. All right. So 27.29, take the sign of that, and divide by 43.42, take the sign of that, equals, that means that R1 is equal to 0 0.667 times the weight of the object, and R2, take 109.29, take the sign of that, divided by 43.42, take the sign of that, equals, and R2 has a magnitude of 1.373 times the weight of the block. So once we have those two forces, we're now able to draw a free body diagram for the wedge, and then finally find the force required to be just at the moment of moving the block upward. But that's how we start the problem. Now we'll go to part two to show you how to find the final force required. And that's how it's done.